<laughs> all right, we are recording. We are going live. All right, thanks everybody for joining in. Welcome to another edition of a homespun brew. Uh, yeah, I, I got to come up with some kind of badass intro for that. I ain't figured it out yet. Somebody said I was the next David Koresh, which is why I keep saying that, <laughs> which I think is funny as hell. Is David Koresh lost? Uh, a couple weeks ago, I got carried away on this idea of the Grove Galder in, in the Svit Dags Mall. The Grove Galder is this, uh, it's uh, this young man goes to his mother at the doors of the dead. I call thee, thy son, bethink thee, thou baits to see thy help at the hill of death. So there's a young man. And he's not seeking advice from, from another masculine figure. He's seeking advice from a feminine, from the deceer. I mean, literally, these are, she is part of the deceer now. She is the deceased motherly ancestors behind him. That's who he goes to seek advice from. <laughs> and he goes to seek advice. <laughs> and it's the funny because when you read through the story, and we'll get to it, he's asking for protection because he's been challenged in a way that he doesn't comprehend. He's been challenged in some, he says, she asked him, what evil vexes mine only son? What baleful fate hast thou found? Like something really bad's happened. Well, turns out he's just been challenged to uh, learn to love someone. And there's a bunch of people, men and women, that have been challenged to love someone and we're all looking around going, um, I don't, I'm not, I don't, I, 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 you know, and so that's about the perspective as communication gets between people. <laughs> and it, um, it leads to a lot of pain. This young man goes to the right place. I don't know about y'all, but I remember my grandmothers and when I was a child and my parents was getting divorced and the world was falling apart and everything was changing and, we were moving and going to schools. If there was ever a safe place in the world for a child, it was in grandma's lap. So this young man has gone to a safe place because his father's found another woman. <laughs> and this new woman is the one that says, look, you, you need to go find yourself a woman to love. Okay, how would I do that? I don't know how. Who am I? What am I worth? So we ask for this big, long protection, almost like he's going into combat. And if you read through it, it's, it's this list of, of the runes and the charms that they do. So he never gets off. He never gets lost. He uh, always has help. He uh, doesn't fear death. You know, <laughs> all of these things. Like he's going to war or high adventure. This man is simply going to find love. So when you, when you start looking at that, it becomes, I begin to see a pattern. And I begin to see a very important pattern. And that, what you're looking at is, hey, Brian. What's up, man, all of these challenges of life that we got to face, but we still got to figure out what we're doing here. So you see it with uh, Frey and his affection for Gerder. You see it with uh, you see it with Sigurth and Brunhild. You see it with Balder and Nana. Theirs is a next level shit, though. Theirs is a whole other level we haven't even begun to be able to comprehend. It suggests to me that there is a next level. Anyway, the mother offers all these charms. These are the commonplace charms of simply raising a child to send them into the world. So that tells me it really is that simple to fall in love with someone. So his stepmom says, look here, boy, you got to go find a girlfriend. This is all there is to it. And then boy, he's like, I don't, I, I don't know what to do. Um, the mother reassures him you're worth it. And I think sometimes that might be all we need to know. Am I worth it? Because this last person I was with, they didn't, they didn't think I was worth it. That one before didn't think I was worth it. There's some people over there don't think they don't think I'm worth it. Where do you find those people around you in your life <laughs> that say, you know what, you're worth it, man. You can do it. You got what it takes inside you already. And that's basically all Groa did 
for Groa's Galder, for the spell for her son. <laughs> Made it sound all fancy and pretty. It's like grandma's. It's like grandma's do. You got a little sore, little boo-boo and a little kiss. It makes it all feel better. Grandma gave us some love. Everything's good. We're going to go on our way back to killing dragons and dinosaurs and cowboys and Indians with the stick and all that shit. <laughs> Same thing in life. Only it's next level. So we, we, we look at that. But the, the next part of it, you know, Svipdag is, he's reassured. The other place we see that is when Freya, the goddess, this goddess of love, abundance, affection, all of these wonderful things, this most high-born noble lady of the Vanir and the Aesir, <laughs> takes Otter. He's got a wager to win. He don't believe in himself either. So this goddess, this divine feminine aspect, reminds this young man and uses the ugly woman to do it, you are worth something. You're worth something. And that, um, and there's a similar aspect of that when, uh, when um, Frey's manservant, I can't remember his name, God dang it, goes to discuss terms for, for, uh, for Gerda to meet with Frey in the forest, in the woods. So there's, he's convincing her that you can't simply live under your father's house and all of these great benefits and wonderful things that you have as a daughter of this well, truly high established nobleman, this, although be it a Jotun, still quite powerful individual with wealth and money and everything else, <laughs> you don't get to live there forever. At some point you will grow old and be an old maid. Um, all of these things that you consider safe and secure, they're not going to suit you. They're not going to fulfill your life. You're not going to round your life out. <laughs> so when we look at those stories, all of a sudden, the very powerful masculine ideas of, of the Viking and the very equally powerful ideas of the shield maiden and the warrior might not necessarily be the point of all of this. Because I'm looking through it again and again, and I'm seeing individuals being re reassured. I see examples being set by the gods. I see individuals being reassured, reassured again and again, you have what it takes to do this. And each time they get reassured, <laughs> it's not necessarily go build a kingdom. That seems to be a happenstance. That seems to be a byproduct of. They're always finding a partner. They're always finding someone worth loving. And it appears to be the most fucking challenging thing to do in this world. <laughs> so when you look at our lore in that way, all of a sudden, new ideas begin to emerge. What path should we take? Who should we ask? What should we believe? Well, let's see how it works out for old uh, Svipdag. So he goes on his journey. He's been reassured. His mother's basically just reminded him simple, basic spells, basically gave a little grandma kiss on a boo-boo and told him, go on, you can do it. He's going to go on and he's going to do it. <laughs> and the first thing he does is walks right into a big old giant. Before the house, he beheld one coming to the home of the giant's hive. Svipdag spake. What giant is here in front of the house? And around him, fires are flaming. <laughs> Where else do we see a maid with flames and fire burning around her? The Lay of Sigrith and Brunhild. There's something there. Another clue. See, success leaves clues. No matter where the fuck it is, success leaves clues. There's ideas. There's concepts we got to continually deal with. Here we have one more time. This boy is going to have to take what his mother, his mother's blessing and his stepmother's challenge and become a man capable of crossing through those flames. Can't just saunter in there like John Wayne and expect, well, I'm just going to give it all to you. Here you go. No, motherfucker, you're going to have to prove who and what you are. <laughs> so he meets a giant in front of a ring of fire. And within that, there is something beautiful, something worth fighting for, something worth dying for. Men have done it for, since men have been around. Some woman will smile at them the right way, and they will raise 
entire civilizations if she'll do it one more time. <clears throat> Fjolsvith is the name of the giant. He says, what seekest thou here? For what is thy search? What friendless one fain which thou know? So he already begins to attack his confidence. It already becomes this psychological idea. And it's something that we deal with on our own terms. I'm out here doing this by myself. Nobody's listening. I don't have any friends. Who do I think I am? Why can I, why would I even try this? What am I really worth? Who, I, she's out, they're out of my league. What am I, right there. That negative thought process. <laughs> Eats people's lunch. It showed up right there in the form of a giant. As soon as the challenge becomes very, very real, we begin to doubt ourselves. By the way, so wet must thou wander hence for weakling. No home hast thou here. You ain't got what it takes to come in here. Who do you think you are trying to even talk? Go on down the road there, buddy. And we do it to ourselves because we've been taught to do it to ourselves. We've been taught not to believe. Well, kids are to be seen and not heard. You need to stop that crying for I give you a reason to cry. All that happy horseshit we grew up with that we saw in school, all the conditioning, all that stuff. <laughs> we learned to doubt ourselves far easier than we learned to believe in ourselves. That's why it has such a magical appearance when Svitdag goes to speak with the DC or with his mother in the mound. It's got this wonderful, magical idea. When Freya offers all of this, God, when Heindla, the ugly woman that Freya calls out to help Otter, it's got all this magical quality to it. Well, that's the divine feminine showing him the way. <coughs> that's, uh, that's how you raise your kids, to believe in themselves. So it's not a new thing that we're just figuring out, well, there's some kind of blue or red or black or woke or some horse shit about what's going on in the world that I need to learn so I can believe in myself, so I can see through the veneer of societal poisoning and conditioning and control. <laughs> How about we start believing in ourselves? Maybe that's why these gods are showing us this stuff again. Maybe that's why they've slid in here and said, hey, uh, buddy, you can do this. Why don't you give it a shot? <laughs> Zvitbag spake, what giant is here in front of a house to the wayfarer? Welcome denying. Who are you to deny me hospitality? So he still believes in himself. Nobody loves Brian Wilton like Brian Wilton. And it's got to be that way in your life. You've got to believe in yourself. Who in the hell are you to tell me I can't? Because there's a world out there. They will line up like checking out at the grocery store <coughs> to tell you, you can't do that. Why do you want to do that? Nobody else is doing that. Who do you think you already even tried that? Why do you want to talk? You don't know her. What do you, what do you got to offer? Hmm? That goes through our minds. Our buddies say the same thing. If you have buddies saying that kind of shit to you, get them out of here. Find a new set of buddies. Find some buddies that will run with you, that will stick by your side, that will tell you, hey, you really are, you really are something. That's important. That's why we build the communities of people around each other, because they're the communities that are saying that to each other. Those communities succeed. <laughs> so we, we go through this, but um, there's a footnote here. About the numbering, there's there's interpolations in some of this uh, between the Groa Galder and the, and the Fjolvin's Mall are to be considered as a single poem. And they got it broke down to, to two here. Now, Boog, I don't know why they keep referencing him, because he was thoroughly one of those 17th century scholars that was insistent that this was all too heavily Christianized. He had the idea that Christianity came first and this came later. I'm of a much different mindset. I think this came first, and much of what you have today in European Christianity originated in this, from this, not the other way around. <laughs> but if you were to suggest that in the 17th century, you'd be burned at the stake like a witch. It does have some intellectual insight. Editors have suggested various rearranged merits in the line 1719. The substance, however, is clear enough. The giant, Yelsvith, much wise, that's his name, much wise. <coughs> there is a concept throughout much of Christianity to be the doubting Thomas, to be the one that questions. Sometimes it was considered to be the height of wisdom to question such highfalutin ideas, but it's also 
uh, wise to question one's own intention, isn't it? Shouldn't we be asking ourselves, why am I making this friend? Why am I listening to this person? Why am I believing in myself? If you can begin to do that in a state of mind where like some of the friends that I have, where I don't have to pretend who they are to pretend to be who I am. Now you can ask those kinds of questions and really begin to develop and grow. And that's the real important thing. That's the real strength of those kinds of solid friendships. And the, the, the conversation isn't always heavy and dull. It's stupid and you laugh and you enjoy each other. But at the bottom of it all is this real strong, safe foundation of I can be who I am. That, from that concept, it's a springboard for literally anything you want to do in the world. <laughs> anyway, much wise is the water of the house in which Mingloth dwells. See, he sees Vipdag coming and stops him with customary threats. Okay, customary threats. These are the same doubts that run through our minds on a daily basis about whether or not we can actually accomplish what we want to accomplish. I want to be president. Well, you can't be president. See, we, we do that to ourselves. See, when you're trying to cultivate a powerful, positive thought process, it's this, it's not just, here's your thought process. 90% of it's negative. You don't get to just, well, I'm going to take that out and put a positive thought there. Now I've got a positive thought process. No, you still have a negative thought process with a little insertion of a positive thought. You have to change all of it. And so that's the beginning of wisdom. That's where the much wise comes in for us. <laughs> it's something we've got to learn. The business is here to teach us that. <laughs> now, as the old spake, greeting full fare thou shalt never find. So hence shalt thou get thee home. He just tells him you're not worth it. Go home. We, we gave it the office. We're not buying anything. Blah, blah, blah. Now, Mengloth is kind of special. See, there's a concept that Mengloth might actually be Freya. So this boy that got this blessing from his dead mother in the mound, this cultivation of what it means to become a man, this understanding of the spells that allow men to operate in this world, <coughs> he's not really just seeking a woman, is he? He might be seeking something even better. And that's, that's really special. And there's some real, real interesting things that go with that. But I digress. <laughs> Fuel vis am I, and wise am I found, but miserly am I with meat. Thou shalt never enter within the house. Go forth like a wolf on thy way. So he's like running him off like a stray dog. Here's some scraps. Get out of here. Shoe fly. You know, that kind of nonsense. <laughs> Spit back spake. Few from the joy of their eyes will go forth when the sight of the ones, when the sight of their loves they seek. Few from the joy of their eyes will go forth when the sight of their loves they seek. So he sees what he loves. When a man loves something, when a woman loves something, you're gonna be hard pressed to fuck that up. Although I promise you that if you do, it's gonna go south pretty quick. Full bright are the gates of the golden hall and a home shall I here enjoy. He still believes he's worth it. He still believes that that which he loves, he has something to give. So you can't give something away you ain't got. So this is a fully confident individual who is certain of his future. He is doing his best to wrestle with these doubts. It's the kind of conversations we have in our own minds when we're trying to talk to somebody we like. We struggle back and forth, blah, blah, blah. When do we get to settle and say, it's okay? <clears throat> Svipdag's not gonna back down. Yold this spake, tell me now, fellow, what father thou hast and the kindred of whom thou camest. <coughs> so he's asking his heritage, same damn thing Heimla and Freya did with Otter. Same thing we go through when we look at the Riggs Thula. What is the heritage? Where do you come from? Who are your ancestors? So you can't just walk in there like every Tom, Dick and Harry and think, well, I'm, I'm pretty important. Why? Who made you important? Where'd you come from? What characteristics do you have? Do you have deep down that kind of mental and that mental fortitude, that gut toughness to really do the kind of things your ancestors did to bring you into a comfortable world? Let's find out. And that's what they're trying to do. <laughs> We've got to ask ourselves the same thing. 
we have to challenge ourselves in life with those things that are tough to figure this out. For me, it was the military. For me, it was climbing towers. For It's always been a challenge. Can I do this? And there have been some things I've gone to the absolute limit of my physical capabilities. And then, holy shit, I went a little bit further. <laughs> Got to challenge yourself in life. That's the surest way there is to convince you. And that's the only thing that needs to be convinced is you. That you're worth some of these things you see and that you desire. You're worth those things that make your heart go kaboom, kaboom. But you got to fight for it. And the first and toughest fight we have is with our fucking selves. So he tells him, he says, Ving called him I and Var called son and Fiol called his father was. Now answer me, Fiol's Vith, the question I ask. For now the truth what I know. So Ving called means wind cold. Var called means the cold of early spring like we have now. And Fiol called the much cold. Spitbag apparently seeks to persuade that he belongs to the frost giants. So he's put out a little bullshit. You know, if you can't dazzle him with brilliance, you got to baffle him with bullshit. That's just how it goes. He's going to give it a shot. I don't blame him. I probably would too. <laughs> I, I have. Shit, <laughs> my kid. So he says, the question for now, well, who is it that holds and has for his own the rule of the hall so rich? So he wants to know who's, who's, who's the big dog around here. The old respect, Mingloth is she. Her mother bore her, bore her to the son of Varthorin. She is that holds and has for her own the rule of the hall so rich. So he tells her that's who he's looking for. And that's who he wants to talk to. He's not here to waste time with some buffoon. And it's just like walking up and meeting somebody for the first time. It's like Robin Williams said it best in uh, Good Morning Vietnam. Know that little bit, your little gay Vietnamese bartender says, first you smile, then you say hi. It's just that simple. We've got to figure out how to do it. So he's struggling with it right here. He started with a line of bullshit, but now he's got to figure it out. That ain't going to get him very far. Spit back, spake. Now answer me if you'll fit the question I ask, for now the truth would I know. What call they the gate for among the gods ne'er saw a man so grim a sight? Phil this spake. Thringal, they call it, was made by the three, the sons of Sol, Solblindi, and fast as a fetter, the fairer it holds, whoever shall lift the hatch. Spitbag spake, now answer me, Fjolvith, the question I ask, for now the truth would I know. So he's asking him about this, he's finding out the details. What call they the house? For no man beheld amongst the gods so grim a sight. He's calling it ugly. He said, who made this hideous thing? So what you're looking at, Thrimvial means the loud clanging. So that's the, that's the gate, okay? This gate, like the gate of the dead, shuts so fast as to trap those who attempt to use it. And it was made by the dwarfs, the sons of Solblendi, the sun blinded, the traditional craftsmen who could not endure the light of day. <laughs> so he warns him it's a trap, and it always is a trap. You get to fooling around and you see something you love and you start making an effort for it, that door will close on you quickly before you even know what's happening. You're trapped. So you better be aware of what you're doing. You Got to ask the right questions. What am I doing here? What am I looking at? You know, how many times have we seen all these little memes come up about, well, if you're ignoring those red flags, you're screwing yourself. He's trying not to ignore the red flags. That's a big old gate. It's made by dwarves. <coughs> and it swings shut and traps people. All love swings shut and traps people. That's all there is to it. Sometimes it got a big ugly cage to it. <laughs> Fiel vis spake. Oh, the house, he asked what the house is. Fiel vis spake. Gastrop near it is, of old I made it, from the limbs of Libramir. I braced it so strongly that fast it shall stand, so long as the world shall last. So it's a strong house. It's got a, it's got a quick shutting gate. It's got a strong house, but you can't recognize it all the time. It's made from something other than what we're conditioned to see with our eyes. It's like so many people going through life dealing with depression or anxiety or PTSD. We try to look at the world through rose colored glasses. We look at something and we say, well, this is good for me. But the rest of the world is looking at it saying, man, there might be a little bit, a couple of things you might want to work on. 
right? <coughs> Which one's right? The people that enjoy it or the people that are passing judgment on it? I'll let you make that, make that decision, but <laughs> if you build a house so strong it'll last to the end of the world, haven't you created that environment where a woman might be free to express the beauty of who she is? It's a pretty good fucking job. It's fit back spake. Now answer me if you old this the question I ask. For now the truth what I know. What call they the tree that casts abroad its limbs over every land? If you old spake. Mimim meith its name, and no man knows what root beneath it runs, and few can guess what shall fell the tree, for fire nor iron shall fell it. Spit back spec. Now answer if you old this the question I ask. For now the truth what I know. So we fall back into the same patterns that we always see repeated in the lore. <coughs> Gastropnir means uh, quest crusher. Libramir means the clay giants. See the limbs in poetic circum. Good night. There's a word I can't pronounce. Imagine that. Circumlocution for clay, the description of the making of the earth from the body of the giant Ymir. Uh, Mima Mith is Mimir's tree. The ash Yggdrasil that overshadows the whole world, the well of Mimir, was situated at its base. <coughs> so he, we're getting some different answers here than we see in the other three great question and answer poems. We're getting some answers, question and answers that might offer some insight in our own personal journey. And that's what we need to be looking for because this very much is a quest of personal growth and development. This is a very personal thing. This isn't about finding glory or kingdoms or, or uh, anything else or ascending to godhood or enlightenment or becoming awake. This is about a man trying to figure out how to become something worthy of love in a woman. And that is not the easiest fucking thing to do, ever. <coughs> I don't know, maybe it happens like it does on TV, I don't know. But what I'm saying is, is that in that question and answer scenario, we're getting more information and new names and new ways to identify stuff we're all very familiar with. Well, now why would that happen? Why would we be given this new insight? See, throughout the whole thing, there's this insight of the growth of becoming a man, of becoming a man worthy of finding a mate. <laughs> See, it wasn't this conditioned or arranged setup. It was, you're going to go earn it. And I think we need to be aware of that because that's what so many of us have to do today in this world. We got to go earn it. We got to become the person worthy of having that in our life. And it might mean looking at something in a new way. And it might mean taking a good long look at ourselves. And it might mean wrestling with some doubts that we have long considered to be positive attributes. Who knows? <coughs> but if we don't, we haven't rerun the risk of being those kind of individuals that deny themselves something in the lore that is repeated again and again and again. Find someone to love. <coughs> what would be the risk of not being able to do that? And don't get that confused. Don't get that confused with some free love hippie fuckfest bullshit. I'm talking about finding people to love. And that means growing up a little bit. Notice that he didn't come up with a political analysis of modern day societal ills to try to baffle and bullshit his way through the front door. Nobody wants to hear that. There's other things we need to be talking about. There's new ideas we need to be discussing. There's new aspects of our of the world we live in we need to be identifying because this is in preparation for not just the individual to be reconciling and wandering and dealing with the world. This is an attempt for the complementary competing forces of individuals to navigate a course through a world that will crush you if it gets the chance. So anyway, we go on down. <coughs> he asked the question, what grows from the seed of the tree so great? Well, we know what that is. But, oh shit, that's important. What grows from the seed of the tree so great that fire nor iron shall fell? Now the seed, this is talking about the seeds of Yggdrasil. 
And I've seen that used. I've seen people use that in great effect in marketing, the seeds of Yggdrasil. What are that? What is that? What is the seed of Yggdrasil? The seed of Yggdrasil is women, sick with child, shall seek its fruit to the flames to bear. Then out shall come what within was hid, and so it is mighty with men. That is a powerful little stanza. Women sick with child shall seek its fruit to the flames to bear. <coughs> that, I'm probably going to have to write a whole book on that. It's not only is it talking about women bringing life into the world, there's also an aspect of the Norns refreshing the roots of Yggdrasil from that well every morning. This is what makes it mighty with men. There's a, there's a huge, powerful idea there. So now all of a sudden we're introduced to something we didn't know before. Now we have an idea of what the seeds of, these, of the tree, the seeds of Yggdrasil might really be. Well, this is a fruit for women sick with child. <coughs> then that shall come what within was hid and so is mighty with men. So obviously this seed of Yggdrasil is what helps women bring powerful and make powerful, strong children, powerful additions to the tribe. Now, if we look at it, what happened at the beginning of this story? That young man went to his mother, the woman sick with child at one time, and asked for the blessings. What she gave him were the common blessings of the runes we find in the Havamal. The common stock that every man has that makes him mighty. Understand the runes, you can dull the sword, you can shatter the shield, you can cut the hangman's knot, you can heal the wound, blah, blah, blah. That, is that not what something that makes men mighty? So he went there, asked his mother, and this woman who was once sick with child brought the heat to her son, and what was once hid is now part of who he is. And he believes it 110%. We should too. This is what makes it mighty with men. <clears throat> Guys, that is, if you spent some time on that and really began to look at it and study the esoteric ideals of just about everything in that simple little stanza in the first part of this poem, you will find those ideas that are saying one more time in a different way, in a new form, you got this on this journey of life. And I'll tell you what it also does. <clears throat> it narrows the focus. Now we're not looking over here for validation. Now I'm not waiting over here for somebody to give me permission. Now I'm not waiting over here for somebody to tell me, yeah, you're right. And now I'm not waiting on, well, I'm no longer waiting. Now I have right in front of me a real clear distinction, a real clear distinction of what it is that makes men mighty. Holy cow. It's a bit bad spec. Now answer me if you old bit the question I asked, for now the truth what I know. What cock is he on the highest bow that glitters all with gold? Vith, vith off near his name, and now he shines like lightning on Mima Myth's limbs, and great is the trouble with which he grieves both Sirt and Sinmora. Sinmora is not really mentioned anywhere else, but Sirt has a partner just like everybody else. How interesting is that? A twin flame. I don't know so much that I believe in soulmates, but I do think that twin flames are kind of an important thing. Vithofnir is the tree snake, okay? Apparently identical with either the cock, Golenkambi, or Fialar, the former of which wakes the gods to battle and the latter to the giants. Sirt, the giant mentioned in Voluspa 52 as ruler of the fire world, here used to represent the giants in general, who are constantly in terror of the cock's eternal watchfulness. Because that, you know, if you've got a chicken keeping an eye on you when you're gathering the eggs, it'll make you nervous. I promise, man. That's you have ever been flogged by a chicken, that son of a bitch will scare the shit out of you. Get one of them old bag, man, you'll be grunting. You'll pay attention. <laughs> Sinmora, presumably Sert's wife, the giantess who possesses the weapon by which alone the cock with Thofnir may be slain. <sighs> this is probably just giggle at him. Somebody just go, you need to flop on down. Just, yeah, I got a fire, got a hot chick over here. She's going to giggle at that cock and it's just going to fold right on up. I'm just telling you guys, that's how I see it. I could be wrong, but I think that's probably all it is. She's going to point and giggle and he's done. Spit back spec. Now answer me if you'll bit the question I asked for what the truth would I know? 
what call they the hounds that before the house so fierce and angry are? So the house is guarded by hounds. Gift call they one and Gary the other. And Gary, I think that's the name of one of Odin's wolves, isn't it? If now the truth thou wouldst know, great they are, and their might will grow till the gods to death are doomed. So now we got some other players on the field of Ragnarok we didn't know about before. We have a new perspective because we're looking for a new uh we're looking for a new pattern in life. We're not looking for the straight, straight on warrior mindset. Now we're looking at something much different. <coughs> we've got some new players on the field, new threats to our existence per se. And that's something we need to be aware of. When we change our course, we begin to change our mind to what we're really trying to look for in this world. We need to be aware that there are new threats to how we think, why we think, and what we're trying to do. There's a little example of it. Now, Etchefield, with the question I ask, for, for now the truth what I know. May no man hope the house to enter while the hungry hounds are sleeping. He's going to sneak by one. <clears throat> Field this spake, together they sleep not, for so was it fixed. When the guard to them was given, one sleeps by night, the next by day, so no man may ever enter. Well, now that sounds like the wolves that chase the sun and the moon. Okay, got another perspective here. You're not going to slip in there. You're not going to, you're not going to uh, find this uh, find this idea of love that he's pursuing here. This divine idea of love. It may not necessarily be the romantic idea, but there's a divine aspect to this cultivation of the ideas of the heart <laughs> that you're not going to just sneak in there and claim that for yourself. You're going to have to do the work. Spit that expect. Now answer me if you old bit the question I ask, for the now the truth what I know. Is there no meat that men may give them and leap within while they eat? Now he says, two wing joints there be in Vithofnir's body. If now the truth would know, that alone is the meat that men may give them and leap within while they eat, so there is a way. That doesn't sound easy. Two wing joints on Vithofnir's body. Um, Giff and Gary, both names that signify greedy. So, conjecturally, the manuscripts indicate the word 11, which clearly fails to make sense. So, there's words in here that don't matter, that there's a lot of interpolations, but we got to figure out what part of it does matter. <laughs> so, now answer me if you'll with the question I ask For now, the truth, what I know, what weapon could send Vith Vithofnir to seek the house of Helvala? So, how does he kill Vithofnir? This great snake. Levitine is there that lopped with runes once made by the doors of death. In Lagarn's chest by Simnora it lies, and nine locks fasten it firm. So this is the weapon that Sert's wife has to kill the cock that keeps an eye on him, the crows when they begin to marshal for war. Levitine is its name. That loped with runes once made by the doors of death. Now, loped is some, it's another word for fire. Sometimes, I mean, there used to be an old saying that uh, when the green wood was popping, that would say, well, that's Loki whipping his kids. Loped and Loki, there's a close association. There's been a lot of scholarly work on it. I don't know that I want to get into it, <coughs> but he is the one, loped is the one that Loki competed with. Um, in, in the halls of Utgard Loki, in the eating competition. And Loped ate everything. Loki just ate what he wanted and got full. But Loped ate the table, the bones, the dishes, and everything. It was wildfire. That's a name for fire. So there's always, sometimes they kind of try to tie those together. Perhaps they go together. I mean, it's a fickle thing to fool with fire. <laughs> Spit back, spake. Now answer me if you'll bit the question I ask. For now the truth what I know. May a man come thence? Who thither goes and tries the sword to take? What's up, champ? What have you done? How'd you do tonight? Not Sunday, there's no practice today. Just wearing it around. Yeah, I didn't have any clothes in my mom's house, so I kind of just been sporting it like today. But you have. Yeah. I don't know if I just want to know. <laughs> so, anyway, Sugar Bitch is here, just started this movie tie with Forza. What's it called? Forza? Yeah, Forza Combat. Forza Combat, yeah. He's He's in it to win it. <laughs> I know, right? Anyway, Levitin, the, the wounding wand, 
So it is a stick. She is going to point at him with a stick. It's the wounding wand. The manuscripts differ as to the form of this name. The suggestion that the reference is to the mistletoe with which Balder was killed seems hardly reasonable. Although I promise you I can come up with a pretty strong argument for it. Lot, Loki, leg yarn, lover of ill, Loki, where the term appears as an adjective applied to Loki. This is Falk's emendation for the manuscripts. Segyar mean, is the, is, uh, means sea lover. So there's, this is all kinds of new information that we don't commonly see because he's on a much different quest than, we're, than we think we're commonly used to. Although, like I say, look through all of them. What are these guys looking for? Fjolvis spake, thence may he come who thither goes and tries the sword to take. So now it's back to the sword. If with him he carries what few can win to give to the goddess of gold. Spitbag, now Spitbag spake. Now answer me, Fjolvis, the question I ask. For now the truth what I know. What treasure is there that men may take to rejoice the giantess pale? Fjolvis spake, the sickle bright in thy wallet bare. Mid fifth off near's feathers found to some more give it, and then shall she grant that weapon by the we be one. So he's figuring it out. So what he needs, he's gonna have to take a sickle, and he's gonna have to go get one of them feathers, and then he's gonna have to go to Sinmora, and he's gonna have to trade a feather for that for that uh, sword. That's a hell of a quest. All of a sudden shit got real. Now he's gonna have to work for it. Now he's going to have to do something. Now he's going to have to demonstrate that he has the ability to slay the demons in his life to be able to cross the death fight wall of flame. Same thing Sigurd had to do. Every man is going to have some kind of different challenge. Every man is going to have some kind of different idea to grow up. <coughs> so, so he tells him how to go do it. Now, but Smith bag spake. Now answer me if you'll with the question I ask, but now the truth would I know. What call lay the hall encompassed here with flickering magic flames? So now he's pointed that one more time. There's the flames he's got across. Um, basically what he tells him here is this goddess of gold is a poetic circumlo circumlocution for woman. Here meaning Sinmora. So he's talking about Sinmora, the, this search partner. Uh, the sickle was, he, he said, get the tail feather. Get the tail feather to get past the dogs. It must be fed with the wing joints of the cock with Offner. The cock can be killed only with the sword in Sinmore's possession, and Sinmore will only give up the sword in return for the tail feather of the cock. So it's not a bad gig. Sounds interesting. I don't know how you're going to do it, but <laughs> I bet he figures it out because he wants this partner to be his. Feel this fake. Lyre it is called, and long it shall on the tip of the spear point tremble. Of the noble house mankind has heard, but more has it never known. So Lear is the name of this hall. And long it shall, on the tip of the spear point tremble of the noble house mankind has heard, but more has it never known. So we've heard about love, but we don't know shit about it. Now answer me if you'll with the question I asked, but now the truth would I know. What one of the gods has made so great the hall I behold within? Phil spake, Uni and Iri, Bari and Yari, Var and Vegrasil, Dori and Ori, Delling, and there was Loki, the fear of the folk. Lear means the heat holding. Um, the names... Our, our, the Loki is the one god that is named, was the builder of the hall with the aid of the nine dwarves. So now all of a sudden we got uh, Snow White and seven dwarves. Where do you think that fairy tale come from? Right there, buddy. Yari and Dori and Ori appear in the Veluspa catalog of the dwarves. Delling appears in Havamal and Bafuthnis Mall. And the later, in the later case, however, the name quite possibly referring to someone else, the son of Day, Dellinger. The other dwarves' names do not appear elsewhere. The manuscripts differ as to the forms of many of these names. So there's been different challenges. So now we got Loki and these dwarves built this thing to enhouse the divine feminine and created this almost impossible task to set it free. Well, now all of a sudden my ego has built a barricade that's stopping me from finding those 
that idea of love that helps make our lives feel complete. How interesting. Spit back, spake, now answer me, feel with the question I ask, for now the truth what I know. What call they the mountain on which the maid is lying so lovely to see? Be off your berg it is, and long it shall be, a joy to the sick and the sore. So now we got some hope coming in here. So now my ego, this idea of the ego that I use Loki as all the time, has built this barricade preventing me from finding love, but also joy to the sick and the sore. For well shall grow each woman who climbs it, though sick full long she has lain. Now we're talking about the healing of women. Now answer me, feel with the question I ask, for now the truth what I know. What maidens are they that at Mingloth's knees are sitting so gladly together? Leaf is one, Leafrasa another, Theophara call they the third. Now Leafa Bjerg means the hill of healing. Um, this stanza implies that Mingloth is a goddess of healing, and hence perhaps a hypostasis of Frigg, although I hate it when they do that, as already intimated by her name. <coughs> In stanza 54, Ear appears as one of Mingloth's handmaids, and Ear, according to Snorri, is herself the Norse Hagia. Compare this stanza with stanza 32. The manuscripts show many additions and show many variations in these names, but they may be approximately rendered thus. Helper, help breather, folk guardian, shining, white, blithe, peaceful, kindly, and gold giver. So these are the names of the, of the maidens that sit at Mingloth's feet on the hill of healing. I had to read that one more time because that's real, real important. Leifa Bjerg is it is, and long shall it be a joy to the sick and the sore. For well shall grow each woman who climbs it though sick for long she has lain. And that's one of the first things that you see in this, in all of this, that offers hope in this spirituality to women. So much of it is centered around masculine ideology, even though we have this full catalog of the ace and year, now all of a sudden we have hope for a woman. We have pain, men have no idea what that means. We have pain we can't begin to understand. But here's hope that this healing hill, there might be something special there. <coughs> what maidens are they that at Mingloth's knees are sitting so gladly together? Leaf is one that one named, Leaf Rasa another. Now that's awful lot like Leaf and Leafrasir, life and the love of life. These are the two individuals that are in the tree after Ragnarok that come out and re repopulate the world. Theofvara call they the third, Bjort and Bleak, Bleeth and Frith, Frith, Ire, and Arbotha. Now that's almost like the cow, the first cow. Damn it. I'm, I'm a doula, so I can't remember it. That's what I get for thinking. The names mean helper, help breather, folk guardian, shining, white, blithe, peaceful, kindly, and gold giver. Not gold lover gold giver. So here are these goddesses sitting at the feet of Mingloth on the hill of healing. So this young man who has figured out who he is has all of a sudden stumbled upon this amazing treasure of life and understanding and beauty and love. I, I wonder sometimes if maybe that ain't what some of us were all looking for when we got in here. Some kind of hope like that that great opiate of the masses that we deny ourselves all the time? It's right here. You can't build the great things that our ancestors have built, the nations, the kingdoms, all of that stuff, without some kind of belief in hope and love. And this tale is very much a struggle to find that I, those ideas. And he finds them in spades, doesn't he? Soon as he goes looking, he finds them in spades. Holy cow. <laughs> so all of these different names, all of these different ideas that he comes across, he finds new understanding because he's looking at it from a different angle. What happens if we look, begin to look at some aspects of our faith in a different angle? Why do we always find new learning? 
We always find something new and amazing. That's one of the wonder, most wonderful things about all of this. There's no limit to what we can continue to grow and develop and become. All we've got to do is figure out where we want to go. <laughs> so, Smith Dag Speck, now answer me if you'll with the question I asked, but now the truth what I know. Aid bring they to all who offerings give, if need be found thereof. So he's asking, is this really true? Do these ladies offer help to all of the people that give offerings? Feel bespake, soon aid they all who offerings give on the holy altars high. And if danger they see for the sons of men, then each from ill do they guard. What happened in the first stanza of this? That young man's mother came from the grave, from the grave mount, <coughs> and they offered aid protection from danger for this son of this man. And they did each from ill do they guard. Wasn't that special? It was simply a reminder of these runes are your tools. You already have this, you got this, go make it happen. That seed of Yggdrasil. <laughs> so this is an amazingly important, yeah, this is the next book. Smith back speck, now answer me if you'll with the question I ask, for now the truth what I know. Lives there the man who in Ming Mingloth's arms so fair may seek to sleep? Is there someone worthy to be held by this woman? No man there is who in Mingloth's arms so fair may seek to sleep, save Svipdag alone, for the sun bright maid is destined his bride to be. So it went full circle in the tale just then. They offered aid to those who have, yeah, you read it again and it's going to blow your mind. Every time I read it, I, I get more impressed with it. <laughs> Spit dag spake, fling back the gates, make the gateway wide. Here mayest thou spit dag see, hence get thee to find if gladness soon Mingloth to me will give. The old be spake, hearken Mingloth, a man is come, go the get thou guest to see, the hounds are fawning, the house bursts open, spit dag methinks is here. So spit dag pointed out, look here, I got this. <laughs> you know, he just stood up like John Wayne, Captain America, and and Superman all in one and said, I got this. And shit started opening up. Ah, it was fucking fantastic. So he got it, you know. But he went through all of that stuff to help us understand the thought process we got to go through when we want to do the same thing with someone we want to love. <laughs> On the gallows high shall hungry ravens soon, <laughs> the hound Mingloth spake. On the gallows high shall hungry ravens soon thine eyes pluck out if thou liest and saying that here at last, the hero has come to my hall. Well, she ain't fooling around. If you're lying to me, I'm gonna string your ass up from a tree and the ravens are gonna eat your eyeballs. So obviously she ain't nobody fool with. I mean, she's getting on him. Which camest thou hither? How camest thou here? What name do thy kinsmen call thee? Thy race and thy name as a sign must I know that thy bride I am destined to be. Zvitdag spake, Zvitdag am I? And Solbjart's son, thence came I, by wind cold waves, wind cold waves, with the words of earth shall no man war, though unearned her gifts be given. Now the words of earth, that's destiny, that's one of the norns. The bolts of earth line your path. You can go this way, you can go that way, but there's a path that she's laid out for every decision you make to go left or right. No man can war with that. And the gifts that you get in those paths, Who's to say if they're unearned or not? And a lot of struggle in some of this stuff. Mingloth spake, welcome thou art, for long have I waited. The welcoming kiss shalt thou win. For two who love is the longed for meeting and the greatest gladness of all. And it's the same scenario when Frey meets Gerda after nine days in the wood. Welcome thou art. Long have I sat on leafy bark here, awaiting thee day by day. And now I have what I ever hoped. <clears throat> for here thou art come to my hall. Alike we yearned, I longed for thee, and thou for my love hast longed. But now henceforth together we know our lives to the end we shall live. Man, that's all right. <laughs> I like that kind of stuff. So we find out one more time, in one more way, in a new in a new and amazing tale that the same thing that Sigurd goes through to meet Brunhild, 
The same thing Frey goes through to get with Gerder. The same thing that Balder and Nana are doing at a different level. We also have, enough, there's so many different paths, but all of them have to deal with our own thought process. Are we worthy? Do we believe in ourselves? And women and men are just alike in this. Women doubt themselves every bit as much as men doubt themselves. <laughs> How do we build up the confidence in who we are? The question and answer scenario is not so much a battle of wits and intelligence between two different individuals. What it is is the ability to conquer those negative thoughts that cripple us from becoming what we're supposed to become. It is that dialogue inside of our mind that says, well, maybe not. No, wrong answer, I got this. The physical struggle of us becoming what we're supposed to become allows us to negotiate that prickly field of thorns that should be a, a flowering garden of our thought process in our mind. Build yourself up. Become what you're supposed to become. Accept the struggle. Find that person that you're supposed to love. Enjoy the complimenting competing aspects of whoever your partner happens to become. I see in this tale, an all through the lore, <coughs> not the struggle of men to become something more great warriors. I see men just as busy trying to become worthy of someone to be loved. Maybe we might ought to take a look at that. Maybe we might ought to figure that out. <laughs> it doesn't say anywhere in there that we sacrifice so much of who we are to satisfy the incessant desires of a petulant or spoiled brat grown into a woman. It says we become something more and we inspire someone next to us. That Mingloff sat there and waited. Brunhild sat there and waited. I don't know. <laughs> you better have be firing on all cylinders if you think there's a woman going to be sitting there waiting for you. But if you can develop what you're supposed to become, I assure you, there are aspects of the beauty of who she is that no man will have ever seen before. Yeah, it's still there. It's up to us to find it. More importantly, it's up to us to create an environment where it's safe to express it. So tomorrow morning when you get up and you gotta go to work and grab life by the nose and whip its ass, remember there's something good there's something fucking really good out there in front of us. So go for it. Thanks, guys. I'm tired of shit. <laughs> Anybody got any questions? Thank you, Will and Milena. Yeah, you're going to like this when you listen to it tomorrow. <laughs> okay, if nobody's got anything, I'm going to turn this recording off and I'm going to retire because it's been, um, I think I'm running on about four hours of sleep, 10 hours a day and this, but I, I wouldn't give that up for the world. I mean, look what we just read. Son, <laughs> that's what it's all about. Thanks, bro. Have a good night. Y'all take care of yourselves tomorrow. You too, Brian. It was good hearing from you again. Yep, yep. Be careful out there. <laughs>